So we're going for our third shot of the day. For this one, I think we're gonna go vertical. We're gonna see if we can capture sort of the, the height of the Ferris wheel and the Pierhead house there. So I'm going to switch my camera mount, which is in landscape mode, and now we're gonna go vertical. So for those of you that are desperate to have vertical photos, we got you covered. And now I need to go frame this thing up. So it's gonna air on the side of making sure that we definitely get the height. Now, if we're lucky, that Ferris wheel is going to spin because um, I'm not really sure what the motion will do. It'd be quite interesting. If it was at night, which you can use these cameras at night as long as you have a decent light source. Um, and in fact, that Ferris wheel at night probably would make for a really interesting long exposure. Um, you would get light streaks that would sort of create around it. Um, so I'm going to go for it. And if for some reason, It doesn't work, we'll just shoot it again. It's crucial to have fairly strong sunlight when you shoot these, because um, the paper is incredibly slow. I have a feeling that sun's gonna go out on us any second now, so I think I'm gonna wait. So this is my secret weapon, which arrived just yesterday in time for this shoot. Um, highly recommend it. They're about three quid, and it really does help you line up these shots. Um, without it, um, I was using chopsticks. Um, those work pretty good as well, and then you can eat your lunch with them, but this is a bit more portable. Anyone who's ever been on a film set knows what this is. This is waiting for the sun. And usually some big burly gaffer shouts at you, two minutes. Okay, so I think we're gonna give this a go. The clouds hopefully will give us two minutes. And as I say this, it is now getting cloudy. Check back in. And we're back. Okay, we've got a bit of sunshine. Gonna do a quick double check. Make sure nothing's moved. We're good there. Definitely good there. And definitely good there. So without further ado, stopwatch at the ready. Let's go. Pinhole nice and open. We got bright sun now. Uh, hopefully it's gonna stay. So I'm gonna try and go for about two minutes uh, to two minutes, 15 seconds. We've already pre-flashed for about 10 minutes. I'm sorry, 10 minutes, 10 seconds. If you pre-flash for 10 minutes, you'll get nothing. Um, we did it again against a white pole over there. So fingers crossed, we'll be three for three today. Ooh, and there goes the Ferris wheel. So we're gonna get at least a minute of moving Ferris wheel. I have no idea what that's gonna do, but we're gonna find out. It's, it's fun to play with movement. Um, you just don't know what you're gonna get. Forty seconds. I think with this bright sky, we could probably do two minutes flat. Um, so we're at 155 now. It'll also be interesting to see what happens with all these people walking. So I'm gonna call it. And we're gonna close. There we go. So we've closed up now. And the Pinsta logo is covering and the red is on the opposite side of the major pinhole. These other pinholes, they create a shape, a mask over it, an oval, and I believe the other one uh, is an oval but in a different uh, aspect. I don't use those as much because uh, what we're trying to do now is just really show that exposure and composition, but um, once you get the camera, knock yourself out. There are so many different things you can do with this. You can even use the filter tray on the inside to create your own, um, if you wanted to write your name, you could write your name and it would be burned into the photo. You could do scratches, you could draw images on it. 
and that would be burnt into the photo. So um, we'll talk about that later in a different video, but um, there's loads of things we can do. But right now, we need to develop this. So let's go. Uh, welcome back. We're about to do exposure number three. We're next to the very, very noisy um, Ferris wheel. So uh, you have to excuse that, but well, let's face it. I think by now we know what we're doing. So this is our first attempt at a vertical and um, let's do it. So again, this is my normal kit. The other kit you've seen me with before, it's literally because we've brought two of everything just in case something went wrong here during the shoot. Um, but everything you need fits into this one little bag here, or one backpack. Um, so same chemistry we've been using all morning. We're gonna go for our third print off this chemistry. Okay. Developer in, and so that's it, straight in with the developer. Now we're just gonna give it a little gentle rock. Um, I like to add about 10% to the developer after each time I use it, just in case it's getting slightly exhausted. Um, so we'll probably go one minute, 10 seconds on this, one minute, 15. There's no real right or wrong to rocking. Um, you just don't want to shake it like a cocktail. That's been 1 minute 15. So we're going to extract that developer. The developer will start to change color as it becomes exhausted. So just keep an eye on that. As you see, we're getting a bit more of a brighter yellow now. Pull the fixer out. Again. And we just eject that in right there. And we just give it a rock. This will take about four minutes, so I won't bore you with uh, chitter chatter for four minutes and we'll just check back in once it's ready to be extracted. Welcome back. We're just about to extract our fixer here for shot number three. Um, in fact, there is a fourth shot. I told Charles we were going to go after this one, but I just remembered. We're going to shoot that building behind us because uh, it's just gorgeous. Um, and then we'll have lunch, I promise. So, fixer comes straight out. Again, we're losing a mill or two on each one. Bring the water out now, just for a quick clean. In it goes. Give that a minute. And then we see if we can go three for three today. Keep in mind, you know, even for me, I've been doing this, well, since, <laughs> since Ollie gave me the camera. I'm probably the foremost expert on these, uh, the Pinsta. I probably, one out of every two shots doesn't quite turn out the way I want it to, um, which is the beauty of shooting in the field and developing in the field, is you can go and you can shoot that shot again. You can change your exposure. If your composition's off, you make a slight adjustment. Um, so don't be discouraged if shots don't come out right the first time. It, it's all part of the learning curve. Okay, got about 20 more seconds on this wash. I'm going to take it out, 
and uh, as usual, fingers crossed. Okay. Three, two, one. Oh, he overexposed it slightly. It's still a good shot. I still like it. Slight overexposure here against the sky and just cut off the top of the pier head. So, I'm tempted to shoot it again, but I think we gotta move on and shoot that. We're gonna take it, but as you can see, the composition, I could have moved it slightly that way, and the exposure, that white wheel against the white sky uh, was probably a big ask um, when you think about it. And Charles, if you want, you can pan over and show people the gigantic white wheel. So actually, this one's growing on me. <laughs> I definitely could improve it if I shot it again. Um, but the, the diagonal lines here, as well as the lines of the building, and then having the oval of the Ferris wheel, uh, it actually has a lot of interesting things going on in it. I, I definitely could improve it, and I definitely think I'll try to shoot this shot again at some point. Um, just unfortunately for today's shoot, we want to move on and capture, uh, ideally, as many different looks as we can. And um, I'm quite chuffed that we're going to try to shoot the big boy behind us. So um, put that one away and we'll move on.